Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to handle missing data in your research. One of the things that um, most analysis has the assumption is, is that you have complete data, that there is no missing uh, data and then when you have missing data it usually causes issues. So before we kind of jump into how to find if you have missing data and how to address it, let's talk first about why does data really go missing um, you usually kind of three areas that you talk about when you talk about missing data. One is called missing completely at random, which means there's no rhyme or reason why this data is really missing. An example of this would be just a respondent simply just skipped a question by accident. Um, nothing specific to that particular question. There's just one respondent just skipped it by accident, wasn't paying attention. So it's just missing it com uh, completely at random. The other uh, type is just missing what they call missing at random, which means it's missing randomly in there, but there is something that's usually kind of giving you an indication uh, why it's actually missing. This would be like if older respondents were having more missing data than younger respondents. It could still be missing at random, but if you're starting to see more data that is missing from older respondents than younger, then at least there's some kind of indication to kind of prompt to say, you know, there's something there that's kind of causing this missing data, or at least an underlying uh, problem itself. Again, it may be missing completely at random. It's not one question that's missing all of uh, the data. It's just kind of all over, but there's some kind of indication. The last one's missing not at random, which means um, usually the respondents, when you're getting your data, have skipped this question maybe on purpose even. They don't want to answer that question. You'll see this sometimes with respondents not wanting to a uh, answer income questions. I don't want to tell you how much money I make. Or ladies that don't want to tell you how old they are. And so in this instance, it's not random. You usually see a lot of the missing data in sp very specific questions because they don't want to answer those uh, questions. And so it's missing, but not at random. It's more kind of even purposeful and why they're not, you have missing data. So those kind of are three ways that you see data that actually goes missing. Well, how do we address this then? Well, there's two kind of primary ways to handle missing data. The first one is what we call listwise deletion. And this is nothing more than simply if you have a respondent who, let's say, skips one of the 40 questions that they answered on that survey, so you've got missing data there, it will literally delete that entire respondent's answers. So just get rid of it. It'll delete the whole thing. Uh, so if it has any missing data, it just deletes it out. Now, I, I don't find this is a very good alternative to handle missing data. The reason why is because, again, if I had 40 questions and they answered 39 of those questions but skipped one of them, I don't want to just delete the entire respondent. Um, maybe they just did it again by random, by accident. Um, <clears throat> and so it's not a good alternative just to delete that respondent the, the issue that kind of goes with that too is you may have had to pay a lot of money to get that respondent or maybe there's only a very small sample so all of them have to count and even if they're missing one data point out of 40 I'm not going to delete that whole respondent because of that but the, one of the ways is listwise deletion the second way is what we call imputation uh, this is nothing more than just kind of a fancy word to say we're going to make an estimated guess on what that missing data uh, should be. So we're going to take this uh, this data point that's missing and we're tr going to try to estimate what that data point would be for that particular respondent. With imputation you see it kind of take place um, in usually two kind of primary ways. The first one is what's called series mean imputation and this is nothing more than just taking the mean uh, of a row and saying uh, I'm going to impute that into the missing value. So if you had a question that was asking about customer delight um, and across all your respondents the mean was like a 6.1 well then it would just insert that 6.1 uh, into that missing value if you had one for that customer delight uh, scale item. Now there's a lot of uh, literature out there that uh, says this is not a good idea to impute 
uh, by series mean. I will also say it's probably the most popular and the easiest way that you'll see data imputation by far. The reason why people don't necessarily like it is because let's say you've got a respondent um, that really dislikes kind of everything that you're asking them questions about. So if it's a one out of a set, one to seven scale, seven's the highest, one's the lowest, let's say they're just doing ones and twos on everything. They'd really dislike it. So it's ones and twos and ones and twos, and then they have a missing data point. And let's say as a whole, all your respondents, the mean on that uh, for that particular question was like a five. Well, that doesn't really kind of fall in line with what that respondent was actually responding because they're ones and twos and ones and twos. And then if you impute a five in there, even though that's a series mean for all respondents, they're saying, well, that's not really an accurate, if you want to think about it, guess of that respondent then. And so you've got series mean. Again, it's easy. Um, the downside of that too is it does reduce variance when you impute by series mean because it is regressing kind of everything to the mean when you do that. The other uh, imputation method that you'll see is what's called linear interp interpolation. <clears throat> and what this does is saying that your data is having an assumption that it is linear. Uh, and through that linear interpolation, we're going to try to kind of estimate that value of the missing data based on this idea that we're going to maintain that linear um, kind of assumption uh, out there. And you'll see this oftentimes done through regression uh, imputation where they'll say we're going to try to estimate what that missing value is via regression in a linear kind of format. Now it has some downsides too though as well because um, it often leads to kind of overestimations of kind of model fit and uh, sim and it can even kind of inflate correlation estimates too by doing this. So is there one preferred way to really impute missing data that's out there? No. Uh, you, you can get 10 different articles about how each one of the imputation methods are, are a problem. <laughs> and Well, which one should I use then? I think some of it is just kind of looking at your data too. You know, if you've got a respondent, again, it seems like this is one's not kind of typical to the responses for this. They seem really low, or maybe they seem really high. Then doing series mean seems like kind of really a bad idea. Uh, linear interpolation, I think, is a good idea as well. If you know that there's, uh, you know, this linear, and it's not curvilinear by any means uh, in your data, then I think probably it's a safe way to kind of estimate uh, missing data as well. So let's get into uh, SBSS. I'm going to show you how to find if you have missing data. And then lastly, how do I address it uh, in my data source? So I'm jumping over here into SBSS into a data set where we collected uh, data from a retail um, um, experience for the customers. And one of the items that we asked them was customer delight. So how delighted were their experience they had in this retail establishment? And we asked them three questions. Uh, you can see up here it says delight one, two, and three. And if you just kind of eyeball down here, you can see, well, I've got missing data right here. Uh, well, what if I didn't know, uh, let's say I had a thousand records or 10,000 records. I don't want to have to kind of eyeball 10,000 records to see if anything's kind of missing, especially if you have a lot of questions. Well, how do I determine even if I have missing data? One way you can do this in uh, SPSS is just go to the analyze function, uh, and then you're going to go to uh, descriptive statistics and then to frequencies. And so we're going to look at that customer delight data. Uh, that I said uh, we had asked customers about. And then we're just going to hit the OK button here. So right at the very top of this, you can see it gives us kind of statistics. It'll tell us how many, uh, what's our sample size, which was we had 500 with the first delight record, and we had 500 with the third delight record. But you can see in delight two, we only have 499. And it says here, we've got a missing record. So I know delight two uh, is missing. So now let's figure out, well, how do I 
impute that value. I don't want to go into uh, running my analysis with missing data because it'll probably just delete it and I don't want that. If you go up to the um, transform subheading here at the top at SPSS you'll see there's a value that says replace missing values in it. So let's just go ahead and click that and so initially I know that a da uh, delight2 was missing data. So I'm going to go ahead and click that over. And you can see by default, SPSS, what it does is it says, hey, I'm going to create a brand new uh, row of data that's going to have uh, all of your existing data. And if you have any missing data, I'm going to impute it. But instead of calling it delight2, I'm going to call it a new name. I'm going to call it delight2 underscore 1. And how I'm imputing this is I'm going to take delight2 and I'm going to make it the series mean. It defaults to that. So it will take the series uh, mean for delight2 and uh, it will just impute it and it will create kind of a brand new row. Well, what if I didn't want um, the series mean? What if I wanted like uh, linear, linear interpolation? Well, we go down here where it says method and it says default series mean. We'll click that and we can click on linear interpolation and then just say well I want you to change that uh, I you can see up here now it changed from series mean to now this linear interpolation and so now I want you to impute that if I wanted to literally be like hey I don't want you to create a brand new row at the end of my data set I just want you to take the existing row and then just you know uh, impute it into it well, what you would do is you take this name where it says delight2 underscore 1, and then you just make it the exact same name as your existing row, and it will overwrite it. So if you don't want a new row on the back end, uh, some people do just in case they want to go back to the original data. That way, just for safety's sake, yeah, I'll just throw another row on the end um, by using this kind of linear interpolation that's out there. So if we go to... Um, the data now you can see our very last row out here is delight2 underscore 1 and now we have uh, you can see we don't have any missing data and there we have imputed um, the missing uh, data from that perspective so this is kind of a uh, quick overview of like how to find data, why it, uh, it gets missing, uh, and how to impute it. If you're looking for more information on how to handle kind of missing data and how to clean your data, um, specifically kind of getting into more how to do this before you get into structural equation modeling too, I'd encourage you to check out my book, uh, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Um, then, as always, uh, if you saw value in this video, I'd ask that you like and subscribe uh, for more videos to come in the future. All right, good people. Have a great week. I hope you all are uh, having a, uh, a great day.